First up in this review, we will look at the packaging, build quality, and comfort of the Queen of Audio Gimlet. So at, for the packaging, we can see this uh, nice aesthetic like jade-like uh, front box or front uh, art for the Gimlet. So we can see the Gimlet word in a like a gold, shiny gold uh, printing together with the uh, Queen of Audio uh, logo up at the top so gimlet we can see that it's a 10 millimeter lcp diaphragm dynamic driver so at the sides you can see that more of that chai fi stuff with the motos and all that passionate taste and the ultimate life there's an audio of the, up there and a continuation of that uh, jade green like uh, aesthetic to the box so at the back we can see the uh, specifications and frequency response of the gimlet so uh, its impedance is at 32 ohms and sensitivity at 108 decibels and you can see it's the driver type the frequency response range and you can see a glimpse of the FR graph right over here so you can see that for yourself so here's the uh, front box packaging and for the inclusions we can get um, two uh, ear tips included so they're they're both uh, like wide board tips but uh, this one the white ones it's it's it has a narrow or a shallower uh, stem to it rather than this one so the blue ones has a longer stem rather than the, the white ones so they're included in this mini bags and of course there's a an included case which is really nice it has this uh, snake skin or like <laughs> it can be compared to my godzilla's uh, texture when it comes to skin or when it comes to texture and if you can see there's a faint like embossing of the queen of audio logo right over here and when you open up the box and uh, you can see it's uh, pretty much a standard casing with a mesh stretchable me mesh at the top and the space for your IEM at the bottom so for the uh, let's proceed to the uh, build quality so I have here the uh, queen of audio uh, gimlet and it's uh, you can uh, buy this and it's um, there's uh, like a green color and the white one so I got the white ones so the overall build quality of the uh, IEM itself, let's look at the IEM, it's, a, it's very nice, it's a uh, metal one, I, I think this is an alloy but it has this very nice heft that really ticks my boxes when it comes to uh, hefty IEMs because I pretty much prefer hefty IEMs because of, you can feel the weight and the, the, the <laughs> it, Okay, it makes you feel the price of the IM or the value of the IM that uh, you buy. So let me remove the fit. Uh, so it comes, I install the uh, uh, small sized white bore ear tip right over here. So you can see the IM and it's uh, without the tips included. So it's a very nice uh, heft to it, but I've have to comment the uh regarding the build quality there's like a uh, seams over at the sides if you can see right over here and uh this um uh, seam can uh affect the build quality because if, if in the occasion that you uh, uh if the im falls down on the ground hard it has the chance to like break apart or come apart at these seams so i would I prefer a seamless build because it uh, gathers much more confidence rather with a seam but uh, maybe a decision in building this one to create this IEM so uh, that's just a nitpick so here we have a, like a I don't know what material this, this is but it's like a gold colored nozzle so it's definitely a metal one too. So you can see them nicely uh, shaped like or hold mesh right over there at the top and uh, as you can see it comes in a uh, 2 pin like a 0 0.788 uh, millimeter connection and of course uh, the very uh, obvious designing in their, uh, of their uh, 
I am SD is like a big big gold uh, design over at the front of the AM so it follows like the packaging that like, there's the gold there's gold over here and gold, there's gold over the the nozzle and at the cable so it's pretty much very um, magnetic or uh, susceptible to uh, fingerprints as you can see right over here you can see the fingerprints that I've put into it so it's uh, push it with the cloth and there we go there's no uh, fingerprints but yeah it's if you handle your IEMs uh, often so you'll get those little uh, fingerprint marks so that's the IEM itself so it's nicely shaped so for the build quality of the cable so you can see I think this is this is listed as a let me see I think this is a, a four core uh, silver plated cable so it has this nice uh, width, width to it that it's not a, a very assuming cable so it's pretty simple but it has this um, nice elegant uh, color and feel to it that it really comes uh, complementary with the uh, IEM itself so here we have also a very nice uh, velcro strap for uh, cable management and you have this uh, uh, gold uh, inclusions or connectors and in this uh, cable so it really uh, comes into place with how the IEM looks so yeah the, there's the Queen of Audio logo right over there so the uh, connector it isn't that hefty but I think this is metal also but it's more of an alloy and the uh, jack is uh, gold plated so that's, those are all nice inclusions for a build quality so there's the IM so it's much thicker at the uh, uh, jack to like the longer stem of the cable and it thins out at this at this uh, like separator over here so it's pretty much typical at any of any IM cable to be like that so the cable isn't like uh, top notch quality but it re it's it complements the IM really nice and it's not assuming but it's elegant at the same time so yeah for the case too I've also commented on how that looks so for the comfort so this uh, rounder sh shape like look to the IM is really nice so it uh, sits on your ear pretty comfortably and uh, this shorter nozzle I I would have preferred a longer nozzle because it would uh, benefit from uh, uh, how it fits in my ears but it's a subjective one because we all have different size ears so this is this uh, nozzle is like a perfect medium length nozzle that will fit most most ears so yeah i would prefer the longer one but this one will do and uh yeah this uh pretty flat with rounded edge uh side over here at the back so it really sits it sits on your uh pin uh, or on your ear really nicely so it doesn't uh interfere with the how the uh, how this IEM feels inside of your ear yeah yeah so uh, I must comment too that uh, this is this not uh, directly like uh, pushes into your ear so it's more of a shallow or I'm um, not a shallow fit but a medium fit in your ear so it will sit not too deep or not too shallow to your ear so it uh, kind of sits at the nice golden spot of fit when it terms when it comes to how it would hold on into your ears so hello there and welcome to my uh review of the uh, overall sound or the sound review for the pin of audio gimlet so for the overall tonality the gimlet serves a beastly sound for something that looks elegant and proper as i've described in my uh review of the build quality and aesthetics. 
It has a very big and bold U-shaped sound but definitely leans towards the warmer side of tonalities. Its mid-bass presence engages the listener right from the get-go, both packing that punch and strength uh, that will make bass heads smile at the least. So over at the other side of the frequency spectrum, the gimlet also offers a surprising amount of detail and shine, even in its uh, generally warm tonality. So they nicely complement with each other, forming a sub delectable audio experience with just enough identity and personality to set it apart from its similar sounding peers. So, even with its, its nicer overall presentation, it is not without fault. So, the Gimlet falls prey to the uh, linear mid-range presentation that the driver, driver type it has, which is the LCP dynamic driver. So, resulting in some moments of this could have been better. So, but overall, this IEM has so little going against it. So, if there is, it's only minor nitpicks and opinions that can be considered as subjective. So this is honestly a very refreshing entry into the coveted $60 range of IEMs which, in matter of all honesty, sounds too similar with each other. So for the bass, instead of following through with the current trend of having more emphasis in the sub-bass in U-shaped tunings, so the game net has a stronger presence in the mid-bass region. So it brings that classic bass punch and strong imposing texture so that will leave you satisfied if you prefer a bassy signature. So both attack and decay are up average to below average, so which can feel lazy if you're uh, looking for a surgical presentation. However, the laziness of the bass performance uh, results in a warmer and a more natural tonality, which mostly lends itself to the warmer overall sound of the gimlet. So for the mid-range, the mid-range is where I feel that the gimlet is at, at its lowest in terms of performance. Though I feel it is more of a preference rather than an actual fault, I would have liked the warmer presentation of the big gimlet was a result of the lower mid-range having more presence rather than the mid-bass. So as a result of this, uh, the gimlet can have some bass bleeding into the mid-range which makes the mids uh, a tad bit recessed and failed when it comes to its overall presentation. Due to this, uh, the gimlet uh, prefers uh, lower pitch instruments and vocals. So as expected, male vocals are more forward rather than female ones, uh, so which can be rather effective if you listen to more male-oriented genres. So, but even with the criticisms, I wouldn't say that the gimlet is absolutely bad in the mid-range. It could have been, been just better executed. So for the treble, the treble provides a cohesive experience by being in line and in tone with the overall warmer sound of the gimlet. So it is relaxed and non-assuming, with neither pickiness or shrill present in the department. So it plays more of a team player rather than the main star. Uh, it provides ample details and sufficient air to keep subtle things like instrument uh, per, uh, instrument performance nuances like a guitar pick attack, uh, snare, drum ghost notes, and all that present, but not baffingly impressive. So it plays to the strengths of the IM and does a good job of it. I would have preferred a little bit of extra treble extension to, the, to balance out the warmer overall presentation a bit here and there but I get the tonality they were going for. So for the sound stitch and imaging, uh, as in par with uh, warmer IEMs, so the width and the general size of the gimlet sound stage is uh, pretty small. It provides a very intimate and in-your-face rendition of every song in your library. So yeah, which isn't that good if you're into that uh, concert hall experience. However, uh, the more intimate sound stage plays well yet again with the more uh, uh, warmer sound of the gimlet as it provides a good medium wherein bass, power, and presence are better felt and observed. Imaging also takes a slight here as again, former IEMs tend to slightly underperform in these departments. The gimlet slightly meshes instruments together rather than separating them, so resulting in a slightly more effort in distinguishing individual instruments in busier tracks like prog progressive rock or progressive metal and other like uh, complicated classical mu music uh, stuff. So 
Again, all of this can be taken as a grain of salt, as all comes into your subjective preference and how sensitive your ears are at picking up uh, minute details in terms of the overall sonic image. So yeah, that's my uh, sound and full review of the Queen of Audio Gimlet. So overall, this is a very nice uh, addition to the $60 range. So I think it does not underperform uh, in terms of when comparing it to the its life its rivals like the Mundrop Aria or the Duno Titan S. So this sits quite comfortably in amidst their ranks. So if you're looking, if you're more of that person that prefers a more intimate and a more warmer experience rather than the uh, balance and very big and like uh, the very Harman-ish uh, presentation of the likes of Aria and Titan S. So if you're not, if you're not into that, or in the other uh, side of the spectrum of that preference so the game that can be for you so at the $60 range I think this is a great item to pick if you're uh, in the market for this so yeah uh, I hope you like this uh, humor formatting that I'm doing so I'm uh, making myself more visible in these videos so that I can present my opinions to you much more clearer and uh, I hope this revitalization of the content so makes you want more because I'll be uh, creating more content types in the future such as song reviews and album reviews and other stuff like that so yeah I hope you like and subscribe in this channel or if you're bring to my Facebook page or uh, more rarely you come from my head by page so, yeah uh, Goji here and I'm out.